My name is Umberto. I'm a research student at Clarity Center in UCD. And tonight I want to talk about music, moods, and discovery. So I want to start with a question. How many songs do you think you can feed on your phone right now? I'm very well. I asked myself the question, and in the 1980s, when I was a kid, or 90s, I used to carry on my own Walkman, and I would feed only 10 songs on it, and those be, will be my favorite songs that I will play over and over again. Then when the iPod first came out, you could feed 1,000 songs in there, and I said, I will never gonna feel this thing. Well, right now we have access to virtually every single song that was ever written in our phones because of services like Spotify, and we are connected to the internet. So the problem right now is what songs do we, do we play next? And it's gonna be a song that we like because we, we react to the songs in a very particular way and we establish a, a connection with the songs that we listen to. So songs make us happy, sometimes they make us cry, and hopefully most of the time they make us wanna dance. And that's why I think music discovery is very important right now. And music discovery nowadays is all about the recommendations. So when you log in on your Spotify, you'll probably get recommendations based on your social circle. So if your friend shares a song, you will get that recommended to you. Or if a group of friends listen to some, some songs or, or, or click on something like a like post on the Facebook, you'll get those music recommended to you. But you also get recommend, uh, recommended songs based on what you listen to. Because uh, Spotify is very smart and knows that people who listen to Lady Gaga also listen to Justin Bieber. So if you play a Lady Gaga song, you'll probably hear a Justin Bieber song after that, even if you don't like it. And we can also get recommendations based on the type of music we listen to. For example, if you listen to a lot of punk rock from the 90s, you'll probably get recommended the top most popular bands from the 90s in punk rock. For example, Blink-182. But what about the content of the music? What about the lyrics? I think lyrics are very important and haven't been exploited enough in this, in this part of the research. That's why I came up with the idea of using lyrics for music discovery and recommendations. Because lyrics make us distinguish between a happy, a happy artist or a sad artist, even when they look the same. So what I do on my research is I classify music based on these moods, right? So I have happy songs, sad songs, calm, upbeat, etc. And I calculate the similarities between the songs on this new dimension so I can give personalized recommendations, right? So for example, on a Thursday night, when your boyfriend just cheated on you, and you know that, you may want to listen to songs like, we're never ever going back together. But on a Friday night, when you're alone at home and it's raining after that awful Thursday night, you may want to listen to sad songs about the weather with a cup of tea. And then, you know what, on a Saturday night, when you are trying to set the right mood for a party, if Spotify or any other service will be able to play the next song for you without you telling, and that song is Get Lucky, my job will be done. Thank you very much.